Well, good afternoon, friends. I hope it's a great day where you are today. It's a good day in my neighborhood, but it's pretty hot. You might be pretty warm, too. I have a special story for today. It's special because nobody in the whole world has ever heard this story before. Earlier today, my grandchildren called me and asked me if I would tell them a rain story. And I said that I would like to do that. So I'll tell you the same story. And I'll be making it up as we go along. And that means there won't be any pictures. You'll just have to use the inside of your head for pictures. I hope that you like this story. It's a tradition in our family. So, today's story is called Rain and the Trouble in the Blueberry Patch. Hmm. This is the story of a brave, kind, courteous, friendly, adventurous child whose name is Rain. Rain and her sister Violet live on a house on Johnston Street. And there are seven houses on Johnston Street, but you can always know which house is Rain's house because Rain's house is pink on the roof and purple on the walls, except for the days when it's purple on the roof and pink on the walls because she changes the paint a lot to keep the house-eating trolls away. But that's a story for another day. Today's story begins when Rain and her sister Violet decided that they would take a walk. And so they walked down Johnston Street and they got to the little bridge where it crosses the little creek. And they saw the path and they remembered that path led someplace special. Violet said, Rain, this is the way to Tiny's house. And Rain remembered, yes, of course, Tiny. Now, if you didn't hear that story, I'll tell you that Tiny is a giant unicorn. Giant! Almost as big as a house. But her name is Tiny because she's the smallest unicorn in her family. <laughs> Can you imagine how big those other unicorns must be? Anyway, so they decided to take the walk down the path towards Tiny's house and they had gotten just about there and Tiny said oh I'm so happy to see you I was on my way to your house and Rain and Violet said oh really and Tiny said yes I have something very special to show you can you please come to breakfast at my house tomorrow I have a very special treat for you you're really gonna like it and Violet, who likes breakfasts a lot, said, yes, we'll come. And Rain said, yes, that sounds like a lot of fun. We'll be there. And so they said goodbye to Tiny, and Tiny went off down that path, and Rain and Violet went back to their home. So the next day, they were on their way for breakfast, and all of a sudden they heard something very strange. They had never heard it before, but it was something like <laughs> they didn't know what it was, and they got closer, and the closer they got, <laughs> it got louder and louder, and then finally, right in the path, they saw what it was making that noise. Did you know that's the noise that a giant unicorn makes when it's crying? Well, Rain and Violet didn't know that. There was Tiny sitting in the middle of the path, and Tiny was crying. Tiny, what's wrong? Rain said. Oh, something horrible has happened. It's terrible. And Rain said, what is it, Tiny? And Violet didn't talk much that time, but Violet went over and she put her little hand right on Tiny's back and just started to pet Tiny a little bit to try to help Tiny feel better. 
and Tiny said, "It's it's terrible. My breakfast is ruined. I think that the house eating trolls are back." And Rain said, "How could the house eating trolls be back? Didn't you paint around your house with beet juice and sauerkraut juice?" And Tiny said, "Yes, I did, but." Part of my garden is missing, and there are footprints. Footprints? said Rain. Tell me about these footprints. How big are the footprints? Are they very big? Oh, no, Tiny said. The footprints are pretty small. They're, they're only about this big, only about as big as a quarter. Hmm... Violet said, how many toes did the footprints have? Oh, I, I didn't really count, but I think maybe be four or five. I don't know very many, no. And Rain said, so if something was in your garden and it had footprints about this big with four or five toes, I know that wasn't a house-eating troll. Do you remember about house-eating trolls? And Uni said, well, I, I'm just confused. And Rain said, house-eating trolls, everybody knows, first of all, their footprints are giant. Their footprints are as big as a trampoline. And secondly, if you count the toes on a house-eating troll's foot, there are eight toes on a house-eating troll's foot. So if you have anything around your house or in your garden that's as big as a trampoline and with eight toes, then you have a house-eating troll. But the rest, I can't tell you. Let's go look. So they went to look, and there Tiny showed them. Tiny's blueberry patch was all chewed up, and all of the ripe blueberries were gone. And then they looked, and there, the rest of the garden, the broccoli had been chewed up, and the sweet potato leaves had been chewed up. Huh. They didn't know what to do. They knew somebody had been there, but it wasn't a house-eating troll. So Rain did what she often did when she was a little confused or sometimes even scared. She called her Grampy. She called and she said, Grampy, I'm at Tiny's house with the Uni family and there's a problem here. And Rain and Violet told their Grampy about these little footprints with only four or five toes and how the broccoli and the sweet potatoes and the blueberries were chewed up. And Grampy said, ho, 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 that's not a house-eating troll. And Rain and Violet said, yes, we know it's not a house-eating troll. But what is it, Grampy? Grampy said, sounds like you've got a grouchy, grumpy groundhog in your garden. And he laughed a little bit. And Tiny just started to cry I don't want a groundhog in my garden and Grampy said nobody wants a groundhog in their garden well how do I get it out so Grampy helped the children to help the unicorn figure out a plan and what Grampy told his the the kids and then they told Tiny was that the best thing to do would be if they could set a trap. Grampy told them about a trap, and it turns out that Violet and Rain's daddy had one of these traps, that if you set it up, it's like a little box, and then you put some juicy food inside, and then the groundhog goes in to eat, and then the box closes, and then you can move the groundhog. And Grampy said, if that doesn't work, you could try a fence, but a fence isn't always the best way because Groundhogs can climb fences. And then if that doesn't work, if you can find the hole where the groundhog lives, sometimes they run away if you put smoke in the hole, but you have to have a grown-up with you to do the smoke. 
Well, fortunately for them, they got their daddy's trap and they set it up right by Tiny's garden. And they put in some ripe blueberries and some crisp broccoli leaves and some juicy sweet potato leaves. And they set the trap and then they sneaked away. And then the next morning they looked and there was a groundhog in the trap. And the groundhog was not very happy. But do you know how Tiny felt? <laughs> Tiny felt pretty happy. So Rain and Violet carried the trap home and then they got their mama and daddy to help them and they went to a beautiful forest five miles away that had lots of fresh leaves and no gardens in it. And they opened the trap and they said, Goodbye, Mr. Groundhog. And the groundhog ran away. About three weeks later, they were out taking a walk and they ran, ran into Tiny again. And Tiny said, I have something for you. Come to my house. So they went to Tiny the Unicorn's house. And do you know what they had? Yeah, blueberry pancakes. That's what they had. They had a delicious feast of blueberry pancakes. And Uni also gave a very special card to mail to Grampy because Uni was so glad to have gotten rid of the groundhog. So Rain and Violet learned that sometimes gardens need our help and that it's always best to be kind and they remembered that blueberries are delicious. That's the story of rain and the trouble in the blueberry patch. I hope you liked it. Maybe if you told a story like that, it would be different. I'm sure it would be different. Maybe it would be better. That's the fun thing about stories. We can just keep telling them and make them up as we go along. I'm so happy to be with you today. I hope that my little girls in Ohio have a great bedtime tonight. And I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow when I have a new story. But for now, this is Pastor Dave saying goodbye.